morning, good morning. Turn on the marquee lights, good morning, good morning tonight. Good morning, good morning. Broadway is feeling bright. Good morning, good morning tonight. When the theaters shut their doors, we were so sad and blue. Now we're bringing back Broadway in our Tuesday night review. So good morning, good morning. We'll make you feel all right. Good, good morning, morning, good morning. Tonight, tonight, tonight for you. Good morning, good morning tonight. What a take. Good morning. Good morning tonight. Hello, Michael. Hi, Jackie Cox. How's it going? Well, I am uh, on location for today's very serious news program. Mm -hmm, so um, mm -hmm. I'm coming to you not far. I'm still in the in the um, what do they call it? the quarantined states? I am I'm currently uh, on my way to Provence Town. Uh, and oh, I'm very stopped. fancy. <laughs> the makers of fine Provence town wine. <laughs> they, they do. Uh, and uh, and I am here at the, the beautiful courtyard Marriott, where I am drinking uh, this this lovely drink. And I will tell you this, because some of the kids have said, uh -huh. I think Jackie's just drinking water. I'm proving to you that I'm I'm not drinking water. Tonight, I'm drinking an, uh, an actual, um, well, it's not actually an actual uh brand name white claw this okay. is the kirkland signature Ooh hard seltzer that i'm drinking on this evening so cheers michael good morning cheers guys. to you my dear i'm of course drinking out of my biden harris mug as i have for the past two months and uh will do for the rest of my life uh but it's mm, delicious we're um, also uh, relying on the internet here at the courtyard marriott so God help us all. There's a team in the control great. room and backstage helping the connection. Yeah, all of our producers are very hard at work backstage, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. pulling all the strings and making everything work. Uh, if you're a longtime fan of the show, uh, a return viewer, you will notice uh, where it's a little bit of a different look tonight. But guys, it's a pandemic. I don't know what else to tell you. Stick with us, kids. It's going to be a good time because, of course, uh, it is seven o'clock which means uh, that if all were right in this world, now would be the time that theater people would be springing from their beds, would be making their way on a crowded A train down to the theater district uh, and getting ready to wow yet another audience with the magic of live theater. But that's not happening these days because the trains are hardly running and uh, <laughs> Broadway is dark. So a lot of people are missing the magic of live theater. So we're here to say good morning and welcome to a morning show just for us nighttime theater people. Indeed. Cheers. And oh my gosh, what a show. You guys, we say this every week. Uh, so the, so uh, here, it's not going to be a surprise, but every week we try to get a little more aggressive with what we're going to bring you. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, you know, we have big dreams and big hearts and slow internet connections, but what a show we have lined up for you tonight. It is the final night of our Oztoberfest. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, throughout October, we have welcomed some of the iconic women who have played the role of Alphaba in Wicked. Mm -hmm. And how lucky are we? We have not one. Not three, but two <laughs> iconic <laughs> alphabets with us tonight. <laughs> Not, uh, one. Not three. It's two. It's two. The, answer, the answer was two. Uh, we will be catching up live with Broadway power couple, adorable dog parents, uh, and just two of the coolest people out there who don't always dress alike, but might be dressed in coordinating outfits tonight. Uh, Matt DeAngelis and Christine Dwyer are with us. You will mm -hmm. recognize them both. Uh, from the hit musical Waitress, among their many, many other credits. And of course, yes, Christine is our first iconic Alphaba of the evening. But that's not all. We'll also be joined by another one of the most iconic Alphabas out there. She's an absolute legend in the Broadway community and one of the most wonderful humans around. Plus now she's a very fancy Twitter influencer, having gone mega, mega viral a few weeks ago. Julia Murney is here. She's wonderful. And yeah, she went super viral on Twitter. I can't wait to talk about this. She's a star. We she's might. always been a star, but this is, she's leveled up. She's a Twitter celebrity. Uh, plus, The World to Come is a new episodic podcast musical featuring some of the New York theater community's favorites. We are catching up with one of our favorites, Tara Martinez, who's got the scoop on the podcast and also has a very special performance for us. Yeah, I believe she'll be our second live performance here on Good Morning Tonight. It should be our 
third, fourth? Live, what? as in like she's she's do. Oh, sorry. What it's are we talking crazy. about? What's what's live? What's? Oh, I mean, there's it's, many live performances. They've all been live, and they will continue to be. That's gonna thank be great. you. Oh, I'm. So, I'm just getting a note in my control room that that <laughs> is that is correct. That <laughs> is correct. Yes, um, of course. <laughs> and as we've been reminding you all all the past two months, uh, if you're enjoying the show tonight uh, and you're like, oh, God, I want to give them a dollar. Don't give us a dollar. Give your dollar to Broadway for Biden. Uh, we are helping support the Biden Victory Fund and the Broadway community. So just go to tinyurl.com slash bwaybiden and give them a dollar. Give them five. Um, give them something to um, ensure that uh, next week we make some real change happen. Yeah, we're a week out from an election, and I, I, I think that's about the best cause you could find to throw your money at uh, mm -hmm. very, very graciously and very generously. All, all for the next seven days. Just keep throwing money at them. Yeah, it's very important. Well, Jackie, what do you say we jump right into today's episode? Let's do it. All right. Our first guests tonight were last seen touring the country as the stars of the musical Waitress. Before that, he was seen on Broadway and beyond in Hair, Waitress, American Idiot, Once, and in a production of Alter Boys that I would have absolutely killed to see, just to name a few of his credits. That's right. And she was seen across the country in the national tours of Rent and Finding Neverland, as well as right here on Broadway as the high-flying and even higher belting Elphaba in Wicked. Let's welcome to the show, Matt DeAngelis and Christine Dwyer. Hi, guys. Hi. What's up? Cheers. Good morning. Good morning. Good night. Good night. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. What are we drinking? What is in our cups? Bourbon on the rocks. Mm. Work. I have water right now, but I'm going to have bourbon. Do I need to do I need to express you some of these Kirkland signature? <laughs> that killed me dead. I literally I played golf today and I drank white claws on the course today. There's no laws when you're drinking claws, Jackie. Oh, <laughs> no laws when you're drinking the claws. Ooh, I like that. Um, well, listen, you know we love the both of you. We love you, we love your matching outfits tonight. Um, I'm so excited to have you. Ah! We plan this. <laughs> and now the family is complete. Um, where are you guys coming to us from tonight? Uh, my parents' house in Massachusetts. Work. I'm on yeah. my way over. I'm hey, over. come say oh, hi. Right. We have a fire pit up. in the backyard. Yeah. It'll be great. This is That's perfect. I'll bring, I'll bring the Kirkland signature. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be there, and that's okay. I'll be drinking my bourbon over in New York City. Mm. Amazing. Uh, well, we're super excited you guys are here. Uh, most recently, you were seen together on the on the national tour of Waitress, starring as the very sweet as pie Jenna and the less sweet as pie Earl. Um, boo, Earl, boo. I know. People, wait, I have a question. Did people boo you when you came out for your curtain call? Yes. yes. <laughs> really? How did you feel about it? I mean, it means I did my job. Yeah. But, but my favorite thing, my favorite thing about it was I always did the Broadway care speech and it sets up for the perfect opening joke. I would say, ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, I, I was like, I know that I'm the last person you want to hear from right now, but I promise I'm a really nice guy with something really important to say. And it like instantly made them kind of giggle and it, we ended up doing really well in the fundraising, which was great. Work. Got to learn to play. You can, you can play both sides of the coin. Yeah. Be really mean, and then it can be really nice. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, no one has ever booed you, I think, ever, Christine. So very true. Maybe you could play. Is there is there is there a villainess you've been wanting to play that we could? You know, Telsey watches this show regularly. So <laughs> um, oh man. You know, oh, God, I'm trying to think of like bad girl, bad girl right? characters. I'm not sure if there are any that I've been like dying to play. Oh wait, you know what? Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd. Oh, work. Ooh. I mean, wait, like you a, two, have you two done that show it. together? Oh, I would oh, love to. That would be so I got a few. I got a few years to go. I mean, both of it. I think you both have a few years to go, but you could definitely <laughs> age into it together. No, I, didn't I didn't mean it like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, look, you know what? This is what I'll say. How how long ago was he supposed to be married? It wasn't like that long ago. Yeah, it could be like it could be like yeah. a, a, like a contemporary update. Well, I'm down yeah. with that. You and also, like, do, wouldn't this musical take place in like the 1800s? People died at 35. Honestly, you're right. So, Telsey, if you're yeah. watching, Bernie, if you're out there, 
I'm he's definitely sure watching. He's watching yeah. Bernie, Chelsea, yeah. and Sanders. Yeah, we're, we're definitely above the title type of actors. <laughs> Bernie cast us. Uh, you're both above the title in my heart. So if, that, if there was any joke in that, Matthew, knock it out right now. Uh, yes. Uh, so how was uh, how was tour life? How was you know be going from tour life, life of the road, life of changing locations all the time, meeting new people all the time, uh, bringing this message, this show all over the place, and then kind of moving into a new world where we're told to sit very still, meet nobody, and do absolutely nothing. Was that rather jarring? How are you guys, how are you doing? Yeah, it was It was really jarring. I mean, we've both been on um, four, four, national tours four national tours each. Uh, so we've spent a huge portion of our career on the road. Um, and after Waitress, we were both like, okay, now we're done. <laughs> like, like, like it's true. This is totally our own Dennis living room. So funny. Oh, Does it funny. levitate? Does it lift right off from behind you? We'll oh, find yeah. out when the interview is over. Um, I'm like, right behind you, Sarah Bareilles is playing the piano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but both of us, I think, had been kind of burnt out on tour. And so mm -hmm. after Waitress, we were like, okay. We're not going on tour for at least two years. We're gonna like focus on TV. Focus on we're TV gonna and, yeah. Broadway, blah, blah, blah. and then this happened. We're like, I would take a tour. Like, I'd take I a tour tomorrow. Tour. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet people. Like I'm so no. It's crazy for place. for me. It's like my you know my favorite thing about being on tour is like going to you know random city. You know the A markets are always great. L A, Chicago, Miami. They're all they're great. But I love going to the B and C markets and, and like finding a local bar in Des Moines or. Milwaukee or what it's so fun and so now when I have friends who are traveling for work or people who are going on tours I'm like oh I know a place go down to this yeah. place blah, blah blah and like I Wait, really that's a book idea that yeah. is a book idea that is a book idea like uh the second second national tour Jackie Cox is casting you in shows. She's pitching you book deals. She's got it all laid out for the two of you. And I'm, honestly, I'm here for it. So that's bring it on. I, that's a great idea. I but I, yeah, so I just, I really miss, uh, I mean, I just miss airports. I miss that. I used to hate it. I used to hate it. I would fly anywhere if it was safe right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't miss airports, but I, I do miss, I miss like driving places yeah. and traveling and being on just all of the things about being on the road, meeting new people. Um, one of my favorite things to do on tour is do the stage door after the show. I try it. Like if I'm not super exhausted in between shows, like I try to do it after every single show. It's important to me. It matters to me. And, um, and I just know what it felt like when I was younger being at the stage door and having the actors come out and like just spend a little bit of time. Um, so I try to always give that back and I really miss stage doors. And the thing about that too is like, even when Broadway does come back, like I don't know if stage doors are gonna be a thing anymore because, right. because wow. of everything that's going on. It's, that's really, <clears throat> at least not for a little bit. And that's a really kind of scary, sad thing to think about. But, um, but yeah, I miss, I miss meeting people who saw the show who were like, you well, especially for a sh especially for a show like stuff. Waitress, I think, you know, as as is evident with the election seven days away, I think that, you know, sort of uh, uh, a message of hope, a message of uh, of you know feminism, a, a message mm -hmm. of, of overcoming you know adversity. There's a lot of people in this country who are dealing with domestic violence and with you know all those things, single motherhood and and stuff. And I think doing a show like Waitress. I was always so inspired, even though I got booed on my bow, <laughs> that, the, that the last three bows were women. And, and I've challenged a lot of people. And, and I think I, we talked, we might've talked about this last time, Michael, I was on um, with you. I, I don't know a show that has the last three bows that are women that yeah. also includes the female lead, not validating her existence in the play by the love of a man like that. Yeah. It, it just doesn't exist. I mean, Wicked has two, there's a lot that have two, but I can't think of one that has three, and it's it's really special in these yeah. troubling times to be in a show like that. Yeah, for sure. That's a really good point, and I think too what you know what I hope in this time people are using you know their free time to maybe discover some either new shows or some of this music. And I I, I know that when it comes back that you know a show like Waitress, you know, which has such a beautiful uh, uh, a, a, a beautiful book of songs, I think is one that will continue to find new audience members and you know it'll be back and so will so many shows that you know these these kind of messages that are now really important i think 
people will, you'll be surprised. Because I, I thought, for example, in my drag world, I was like, oh my God, I can't go anywhere or meet anyone or do anything either. But I found what's, what's changed is, in some ways, I may not have reached as many people domestically, but now there's people international who maybe I wouldn't have had the time to do these kind of virtual shows for, you know, or to put out content that they can, you know, stream wherever they are. And I think things like, uh, you know, musicals will come back because they're things that get people through their day, you know? Well, yeah, and I, I think too, like, you know, for drag and for musical theater, it's like this stage during is important because you don't know if it's that person in Des Moines first time ever seeing a, they don't have the money maybe to go to New York and they, they've they never seen a Broadway show and that's their first opportunity to see, right. you know, what the art form is. I, I always think there's this girl that I met in Japan who's a big fan of musical theater. Her name is Kaho Kaduchi. We know and, Kaho of, yeah. of YouTube fame. Yeah, oh, no yeah. Way. And But she built that from the, she, she was just a fan and she doesn't, she came from modest means and she always told me that she had to take the train four hours to Tokyo to see musicals that came to Tokyo. And and then she built this thing and like, didn't somebody, Joe Iconis or Robert Kiki or somebody went to Tokyo and Kaho like produced a concert. That's you awesome. never know like yeah. how you're going to affect somebody somewhere and it's just so sure. cool that we get to do this song and dance thing and sometimes you touch somebody in that way it's pretty special yeah for sure and i think if there's if there's any uh silver lining to to go back to christine's uh point of really valuing that stage door time i think there is you know not to downplay all of the horrible things going on but one of the weird silver linings of all of this is the the fact that i kind of are our, our drive to reconnect with each other using these new weird uh internet computer machines um, has really skyrocketed. And so hopefully people are still uh, feeling inspired. I know that, you know, you guys just being here hopefully is inspiring somebody. Uh, it, it just feels good to continue having the conversations, to continue reminding ourselves why theater is so important, to continue talking about theater. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm glad we're all here. Yeah, and the inspiration too, you know, I always say this for uh, couples where both couples are such strong, high performing, artists in the same field like that is also always inspiring we had we had a, a zach prince and brandon uranowitz and on earlier as our uh, another couple who are both kind of in this same boat but you know it, that is always inspiring too because i think it's like oh yeah we can help lift each other and there's always this, like idea that like actors or or performers are so competitive with each other but i, I love that you know, you can find in a partnership the ability to lift each other up, find things you can do together, and also support each other when you're not together. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Zach, Zach Prince was thing. in Zach Prince was in my New York debut show with me. I've known Zach. Oh. Oh my God, that's too funny. Well, uh, I know you guys have a, a special performance for us tonight, which I've been looking forward to all day. Christine, before we get there, I would be remiss to not uh, throw a few wicked questions at you. Okay. Um, you know, I love Wicked. You know, I saw you in Wicked. You know, I'm also obsessed with you and your voice. So let's just like brush right past that real quick. <laughs> um, do you have, uh, what, what, what is like the big takeaway from you, from your time with Wicked? Do you have, how did Alphabet affect you? Uh, what, or what was it like to do the show eight times a week? Um, it's, it's such a, I imagine such a monumental undertaking that so few people in this world will ever get the chance to do. So if we just open that window for a minute, yeah. Uh, what do you got to say? Well, I'm I'm not like I'm not one of those people who did Wicked and was like completely, you know, I never wanted to see Green again. Like I, <laughs> like, I really love the show. Um, it was hard. Don't get me wrong. And it, I mean, it, it it made me so much stronger as a performer and as a person because there were days where I really didn't think like I I didn't think I had it. Um, mm -hmm. but work anyways and and proved to myself that even when I was feeling bad I could still do it even when I was going through something personal I could still do my job and so that that for me has carried a lot of weight throughout the other things that I've done in my career but um I mean it was huge for me it started my career it gave me my equity card I started in the ensemble under the second cover as the understudy and then uh on tour on the second national tour and then I moved up to the standby on that tour and then played Alphaba, then came to Broadway as the standby, then played Alphaba on Broadway. And once my contract was done, I was kind of like, okay, I guess I've hit the pinnacle of what this is going to be. And then they brought me back to Broadway when like, when they had time and stuff. So yeah. I did that show for right around six years total. Wow. And it gave me my equity card. It gave me my Broadway debut. And it, it gave me the, I mean, I'm still not as confident as I probably, as he would like me to be, but 
it welcome did, to the club. <laughs> but it's go on. a lot of confidence um, going forward, just having completed that and yeah. gotten through it. Um, and I, I mean, I met like my best friends on that tour. And so what, like two of your bridesmaids, three of your bridesmaids in the show? Two. Well, was Sam. Two. Sam. I guess it was just, but there was a ton of people from working at the wedding. Yeah. There's a ton of, a ton, a ton of people um, at our, at our wedding from that. But like, I mean, I don't know. I, I love that story. I, I think it's timeless. I think it's universal. I think um, just being able to reach so many young people who are going through school, especially now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't have to do, I didn't have to go through cyberbullying and stuff like that, but because the internet was like kind of just happening and whatever. Yeah. Um, but I was bullied at school and to, to, to see these kids come to the stage door and tell me their stories and, and feeling so like intertwined with Alphabet's story. We're just, mm -hmm. it was so important. And we're both teachers and we love teaching kids. And that, that show just brought, brought so much joy and acceptance for so many people. Well, it's so, it's so easy, I think too, to look at Wicked like, oh, it's that machine show and the flying right. green, girl, all that stuff. But like that show is as close to perfect as a Broadway musical can really be. That when, when she goes up in that thing and sings that, that is a perfect, musical theater moment. It's like Dolly descending the stairs. I mean, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Alpha and goes up, Dolly comes down. They're yeah, both great moments. But really, and, and like, in, there's such a family in that building still. We got brought back, what, like, right before the pandemic, they mm -hmm. did like a back to Oz kind of thing. And, and we got like fourth row center tickets and she live tweeted or whatever, like in between. And it was like, man, even still being fourth row center for Wicked is an experience. Yeah. yeah. And I That's thought so cool. it was weird about going back and seeing the show, but like the second that the downbeat of the orchestra started, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I had no idea that was your equity card. You handled it like an, like a pro, like an old pro. Um, and I listen, people that I understudied before, before I actually got to play the role that really helped me out. Um, gotcha. one in particular, Marcy Dodd, who started, um, the second national tour as Elphaba, she was the first person I understudied in the ensemble. And I was only there, She it was like the end of her contract. Um, she was only there maybe for like six weeks of my first, the beginning of my contract. And she was exhausted and, and you know, beat down and was ready to be done. But she still made such an effort to like bring me into her inner circle and give me advice and help me out. And um, it happens to be, uh, my birthday, like right when I started and I didn't tell anybody cause I was just like learning the show and I was nervous that I was going to get fired like every two seconds cause I couldn't <laughs> dance. And, and, um, and Marcy like looked it up on Facebook and she, I think she was, she had like hurt her neck or something. So she was out of the show that day, the day of my birthday, but like on my little station in the corner, cause I wasn't even in the show yet. There were, um, red velvet cupcakes for me. And it was like a note from her, happy birthday. And it was just That's like- That's so sweet. Yeah, like, it, and, that, and so that, awesome. that informs me now when I take on lead roles, I'm like, I always want to, I always want people to feel that way about me, the way yeah. that she made me feel. Yeah. So, uh, and for my, okay, no, I have a very hard hitting alphabet question. <laughs> you know, we've had many alphabets. The, the hard hitting question, and uh, we've had different answers. Did you wear lashes in Act One, Jackie? No. You are so stuck on this. No, <laughs> you did not. Christine's a no lash. I am a no lash. You, you I, stuck I, to the makeup plots. We yeah. had. Uh, I won't name names, but we've had other alphabets who said they snuck a lash. No, I on see it. In well, Act we One, taking pictures of themselves. I'm like, did they change that? Because to be honest, like I lashes, I can't. When someone else puts them on me, I like them. But when I put them on, they end up looking like just insane. So you weren't even capable of cheating. You would have to have uh, yeah, if I had to your dresser into it. You really had to bribe Joyce McGilberry yeah. to put them on. Uh, well, uh, it was it was up. Julia Murney, our 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 one of our guests later in this episode. It was Julia Murney that started this whole thing. She was the one that told us about the lack of lashes, and uh, it started Jackie's fascination with the makeup plot of Elphaba. Um, um, you guys, you know that I'm obsessed with both of you. I just adore you both. You guys are the greatest. Uh, and I'm obsessed with both of your voices. I'm so excited that you've agreed to uh, sing a little something for us. Uh, so without further ado, let's have a very special performance. All right. Ready? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the host went away. I don't know what to do. Right. <laughs> do you 
hear me? I'm talking to you across the water, across the deep blue ocean, under the open sky. Oh my, baby, I'm trying. Boy, I hear you in my dreams. I hear Lucky to have been where we have been. Lucky to be coming home again. Ooh. They don't, they know, don't how know how long it takes. Take. Waiting for a love like this. Every time, Every time we say goodbye. goodbye. I wish we had one more kiss. I'll wait for you. I promise you, I will. Lucky I'm in love with my best friend. Lucky to have been where we have been. Lucky to be coming home again. Lucky we're in love in every way. Lucky to have stayed when we have stayed. Lucky to be coming home someday. So I'm sailing through the sea to an island where we'll meet. I hear music fill the air. I put a flower in your hair. Know the breezes through the trees. They move so pretty. All I see as the world keeps spinning round You hold me right here, right now Lucky I'm in love with my best friend Lucky to have been when we have been Lucky to be coming home again Lucky we're in love in every way Lucky to have stayed when we have stayed. Lucky to be coming home someday. So good. You're darling. Thanks. I was so nervous because I'm not going to lie, Jackie, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> honestly, oh gosh, honestly, same. <laughs> honestly, same. And our friend John Gardner is watching right now. He sang the first dance and played at our wedding. His um, All his music is under Common Jack Music. He's one of the best songwriters I know. And he is so geeked that we are on your show. He's <laughs> about it. Oh my God! Does he know that I'm literally balancing a ring light on top of a Marriott Bon Boy? <laughs> we literally we have our computer on a barefoot wine box that I got from the liquor store. Is that why Christine's not drinking? Because the computer's on top of the wine? Yes. No, no, I literally wasn't drinking because I was nervous to perform. <laughs> oh my God! You guys are pros. <laughs> now she's gonna drink. Amazing. Well, thank you guys for singing for us. Thank you guys for being here. We adore you both. You guys, if you don't follow Christine and Matt, uh, their handles are scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Give them a follow. I cannot wait for theater to be back. I, know. Uh, I can't wait. As soon as we get back to the city, I've seen your epic, the two of your epic brunches and hangouts online, and we're going to do one. We're going to hang out. When they're back, we're going to Please, gonna all please, happen. please. Um, all right, you guys, we love you so much. Thank you for uh, bringing so many smiles tonight. Uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Good morning tonight. Good morning tonight. Oh my goodness, uh, just the coolest people in the world. Uh, I, I I love them. So that's all, that's all I got. I'm so excited. All right, you guys. I adore them as well. And now, Michael, it's time for today's special report. Yes. Because as many of you know, each week we like to highlight one of our favorite artists making art happen during this pandemic shutdown. Mm -hmm. Today's guest is an actress, singer, and staple of New York City nightlife, seen who you may recognize from singing. The scene was the below the line. <laughs> ah, I changed that part of the script right before we went live. You want to yeah, try it yeah, again? Yeah. Who you may recognize from singing behind the bar at New York's iconic bar, Don't Tell Mama, and who I can actually hear when I'm not here uh, on my way to Massachusetts. 
from my apartment. I can hear this next guest belting <laughs> from like there's there's like there's my apartment and then there's like uh-huh. a chasm and then there's another set of buildings and then I hear her over there because a her voice is that fierce and b the cheers when she sings are so loud. I was gonna say it's not a bad voice to be hearing uh, it, it just happening around you. Uh, she is here with a report about a new podcast musical that you can hear her on. And she also, guys get excited, has a special performance for us. Oh. So with today's special report, let's welcome Tara Martinez. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning tonight. Cheers. Tara, what, welcome to the show. What are you drinking, my love? I have a sensible mug full of Sauvignon Blanc. Oh. You know, cheers. Thank sensible you for having Tuesday me. Night. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my God, thank you for being here. We are beyond excited to have you here. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. You've got a lot going on. You're a very impressive person and there's a lot to unpack. Um, starting with this new musical podcast that you're working on, uh, which I'm so excited about. It is called The World to Come. There it is. It's the first few episodes are out wherever you get your fine uh, musical theater podcasts. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Um, oh my God, I'm so excited about this project. It's so epic. Um, so it's set in a post-apocalyptic world uh, in the aftermath of the quarantines. But oh. funny, <laughs> like it's it's hilarious. Yeah. This guy uh, Eric Ransom, who's um, just a brilliant writer, he created a whole huge world full of fun, offbeat characters, and they're all voiced by amazing actors. Um, and he, along with uh, the composer, a great friend of mine, Andy Peterson, composed uh, over fifty original songs. So that's incredible. Uh, yeah, I, it's so epic, and uh, it was recorded remotely, and thanks to this amazing sound team and the producers, uh, we were able to like actually make it sound like a cohesive thing, mm-hmm. and it sounds amazing. So please check it out, if you, especially if you're missing uh, musical theater like a lot of us are. Yeah. Uh, just like put in some headphones and immerse yourself. Yeah, I have to say, for a post-apocalyptic musical, it's very funny. Uh, It is set in the kingdom of Five Borough, and my favorite are the Snookies from the island of Staten. Um, It's a good time. Uh, And Mr. Rosen is amazing. The cast list is, like, baller. Like, it is New York City favorites. I was reading down, and I was like, oh, my God, I love that person. I love that person. I love that person. Um, So I'm very excited. I saw the first few episodes out today, uh, but I assume they'll be coming out in the in the coming weeks. Yes, over the next few weeks. Episode three was out yesterday. And uh, yeah, and then just like keep an eye out, subscribe, go on Spotify, Apple Music, or any Apple uh, podcast or any other place that you enjoy podcasts and subscribe and get sign up for alerts. And- I'm going to show it one more time. There it is. It's called The World to Come. Uh, and you can hear Tara's voice in there. You're going to hear Tara's voice on here in a moment as well. Because mm-hmm. the other thing I want to talk about is actually, Tara, well, you and I have known each other before before this chapter of your life. But yeah. your current chapter of your life, you are a bit of a staple of the theater district uh, evening and nightlife a world. A draw, in fact. <laughs> A draw, yes, I would say, as the kind of singing, bartender, multi-talent star of Don't Tell Mama. And you guys are back. What is it like to be back at Don't Tell Mama in a pandemic with full PPE, belting your face out to uh, thirsty uh, theater lovers? It is crazy. We... uh... There's a lot to get used to. Uh, we are back. We're open um, seven nights a week. We uh, we work outside and or inside, depending on the weather, uh, depending on people's comfort levels. And uh, and yeah, like we just encourage people to come out. We're we're belting requests. <laughs> well, when we are you there, don't want me to stand in the. <laughs> if you want me to stand in the literal gutter and sing memory, I will. So it's, it's immersive. I, it's, it's, we're keeping it real. I was going to say, and I think I've seen that before, but 
Uh, when we are there, I know the big request that we love to throw at you, uh, which is why we thought this would be a great episode for you tonight. When we are there, the requests that are being thrown your way are frequently from the Wicked musical. Mm -hmm. um, and so Jackie and I reached out to you today to see if you would do us the honor of performing a little Wicked for us. What do you say? Yes. I would oh, love to. I can't wait, you guys. Let's have another <laughs> special performance. This episode just keeps getting better and better. This is Tara Martinez with a very special performance. Did that really just happen? Have I actually understood this weird quirk I've tried to suppress or hide? Is a talent that could help me meet the wizard if I make good? So I'll make good. the wizard once I prove my worth then I'll meet the wizard what I've waited for since well since birth and with all his wizard wisdom by my looks he won't be blinded do you think the wizard is dumb or like munchkin so small minded no he'll say to me I see who you truly are a girl on whom I can rely and that's how we'll begin the wizard and I Once I'm with the wizard, my whole life will change. Cause when you're with the wizard, no one thinks you're strange. No father is not proud of you, and no sister acts ashamed. Cause all of us has to love you, when by the wizard you are acclaimed. And this gift or this curse, I have inside. Maybe at last I'll know why When we are hand in hand The wizard and I And one day he'll say to me Alphaba, a girl who is so superior Shouldn't a girl who's so good inside Have a matching exterior And since folks here to an absurd degree Seem fixated on your vertigree would it be all right by you if I degreenify you? And although, of course, that's not important to me, all right, why not? I'll reply, oh, what a pain we'll be, the wizard and I. Yes, what a pain we'll be. My future is unlimited And I just have a vision almost like a prophecy I know it sounds truly crazy And true, the vision's hazy But I swear someday there'll be A celebration throughout Oz That's all to do When people see me, they will scream for half of Oz's favorite time, the wizard and I. Wow. 
Yarg! Oh my gosh, thank you oh my gosh. so much for regaling us. Oh, cheers, my love. Oh my god, thank, thank you, so thank you for having me. It's it's not lost on me that singing that in front of Christine and Julia Murney is like it's like freaking me out. But uh, like. Thank you for asking me to sing it. I love that song, and it's oh nice God. to sing it indoors. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was our pleasure. We adore you. Thank you for coming to share your gift with us tonight, uh, and best of luck with your podcast, uh, and we will see you soon. Thanks, Tara. Thank you Mwah. so much, guys. Oh, my gosh. What a talent. You guys, what you can't see is that I can see all of the guests in little thumbnails at the bottom, and on uh, uh, we were living. We There was snapping. There was cheering. There was some some pearl clutching. Um, what a good time and uh, what a great springboard into our next uh, our next guest. You guys, before we bring on our final guest of the episode, uh, just a reminder that if you're having fun tonight and you have a few dollars that you're dying to throw at someone, uh, let's say we were at a gay bar and uh, doing this serious news broadcast for you. Yes. Uh, yeah. and you wanted to tip us, don't tip us, uh, but do check out tinyurl.com slash bwaybiden. Uh, we think it's the best cause you could find right about now. We are a week out from a very important election uh, and every dollar counts, especially now at the last minute. Uh, so if you're having fun, throw them a few dollars. And with that, I think it's time to jump in to our final guest. What do you say, Jackie? I say yes, because All right. Julia Murney is our final guest. <laughs> and she made her Broadway debut in Lenin, not about uh, the Russian uh, dictator, but about John Lennon before <laughs> hitting the road as the second ever Elphaba on the national tour of Wicked, a performance that won her critical acclaim. She then returned to New York to bring her Elphaba to the Broadway stage. Yes, she has got one of the cleanest, clearest it's me's out there. There is not a vowel modification in sight. It is amazing. Uh, she, of course, also originated the role of Queenie in Andrew Lippa's The Wild Party, for which she was nominated for a well-deserved Drama Desk Award. She yes. is just a treasure of a human being and a treasure of the theater community. She's appeared in Benefits of Funny Girl, Chess, Hair, which she has another appearance for right after this broadcast. You can follow her around all night. She's gonna. Uh, she's got a lot of stuff for you tonight. Uh, and Pippin, she's got a solo album. She's been on your television. She's got a list of regional credits that will make your head spin. Bring My God, in. I wish I'd seen her in Gypsy. Um, it is with great excitement that we welcome our final Alphaba of Oztoberfest, the incomparable Julia Murney. Julia Murney! Cheers! Oh, oh, Julia. oh my god, wait, what is this shirt? Oh, I spilled on my other shirt, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna put this on. This shirt, wait, can I get it in there? You can, I'm gonna make you the whole screen, here we go. This inequality doesn't fly with me. Yeah, and I don't know if you can see, all the witches are going like this. Oh, oh my, my God, God. Yeah. I am obsessed. It is um, made by a guy who I do not know, but his name is Bill Crifasi, C-R-I-F-A-S-I. He's great. got the coolest, like creepiest Instagram stuff. And I saw this and I was like, um. Uh... Oh my God, I want one. Anytime somebody gives us like a gem of a thing like that, I always am like, oh, I gotta write that down. And then I'm like, yeah, I don't I'm, need I'm to write it down. It's, it it's gonna be on back. YouTube forever. So I can always just watch this back. Um, <laughs> where? Are you coming to us from tonight? I am uh, in uh, Nueva York. Yes, New I've York heard of it. So nice, they named it twice. And oh. uh, yeah. Amazing. Julia, welcome back to the Broadway Talk Live Network. You mm. are one of our most favorite people. And when we, Michael and I were concepting this Oztoberfest, and by concepting, I mean, Michael said, please, 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 <laughs> can we do it Oztoberfest? I was like, please let me talk to Alphaphas all month. It'll be my best <laughs> life. Uh, uh, only only Julia will come back. And so thank you so much for joining of us. Of course back. we'll um, come back. Here I for am. For those who want to see our first interview where I was shocked to hear this groundbreaking and very important news that Alphaphas <laughs> does not traditionally wear lashes in Act 1, you can check out that episode of the 5.30 Quarantini that I guest hosted with uh, Michael as well. And Julia was there and it was so much fun because we had A, a good old time. B, we had lots to drink. What are you drinking tonight? Oh, water. 
I'm just, I'm drinking good old New York City tap water. Yeah, it has all right in it. And I'll tell you what, I grew up here and there's not a cavity in this mouth. Oh. There you go. Oh, I'm just saying. You are the consummate spokeswoman for New York City Water. You are not um, a stranger to being a spokeswoman. Thank you for laying that segue out for me so oh, well. I didn't even know, but you're welcome. Um, you are the queen of the voiceover realm. You are appearing tonight on Oztoberfest, which yes. I am told is not the first time that she didn't know I was going to ask her this on the internet. <laughs> I am being told it's not the first time you have been a part of a uh, Toberfest. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you want to tell us a little bit about it. I've already talked about the witches going like this. Like, what are we allowed to say here? Yeah, it is the internet. You are allowed to say anything you want. It is, it is what we are speaking of is wildly not suitable for work and sometimes for someone's living room. Well, um, you know what? My name is Jackie Cox. So, indeed, say, indeed, yes. lady, indeed, I say, Miss Cox, if you're naughty. That's right, and. Well, anyway, um, the, oh, the ring light is, I, I, it's like I can't see you or I have been wearing my glasses. Which is it? We'll go with this one. We'll go with blindness. You want me to discuss it? Is that what you want, Michael? Well, I just thought we would mention it in passing. We don't have to go into grave detail, but it's a pandemic and people are making a buck anywhere they can. This you know, here's, here's the shortest version possible of, of the story. Many, many years ago for about two months, I uh, was the promo voiceover person for a cable channel that no longer exists called the Spice Channel. And it was for the pay by the hour Spice Channel. Uh, I said a lot of things, but one of the things that I did that was written, and when I read this, I was like, how has this never been thought of? Was that, I'll put on a little porn voice for you. Oh, please. Was that, I welcomed you. To the month of Cocktober on Spice. Oh, work. Cocktober. We are here. We are wrapping up our month of Cocktober, and um, it's a longer story. But that's that's the 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 long and the short of it, so to speak. <laughs> and um, and yes, I mean there is more. And uh, Jeff Blumenkrantz, who's an amazing actor and amazing writer, wrote an entire song about it. Oh my God, that is so cool. It's called Welcome to My Apartment and you can find me singing it, I'm sure, on the YouTubes. But um, yes, so I, I, because I've told that story now and it's because it's been filmed and it's on YouTube, every year now on Twitter, as September is rolling to an end, I start getting these tweets from people that are like, oh, it's time, it's time. <laughs> Who are like, are you excited? Are you excited? I'm like, well, a blessed Cocktober to you all. <laughs> I can't remember who, we had a guest on the show that mentioned this to me, which is why I went to look it up. Uh, mm -hmm. I, did, I did type Julia Murney Cocktoberfest into YouTube and my browser history has never been the same again. Uh, but we had a guest on the show mention this to us, which is why I had to look it up. So thank you for uh, confirming the story for me. And I think we can move right along now that we've, I feel better now that we've addressed also, that. I did not wear lashes in act one and I definitely did porn voiceovers. These things are true. But you're you're in good company. I didn't didn't uh, didn't the, the youngest Brady girl do that as well? The, 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 what's what's the little one? Listen, a gig is a gig. Yeah. What Cindy did voiceovers for porn? Yeah. After after Brady Bunch, you know, she had to do something, and so she did that. Okay. I so did, this I, is what I I look. I'm known for being a very hard hitting and fact uh, checking and detail oriented okay. journalist. Yes. I believe that's true. The kids in the comments will confirm or deny. Speaking of kids in the comments, I do have to say, they've been celebrating this month something they've called Coxtober. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hope, Hope is celebrating as well. And they've been putting up little drawings of me, which is very oh, cute. Come on, that's so nice. I love it. I love it. So you know what? It's Oztober. It's Coxtober. It's Coxtober. It's all Tober. That's right. That's and her. also with you. And, and, also, it's, and also with you. It's a good time. Well, Julia, we're thrilled to have you here. I'm glad that we started with that and just really owned it. Mm -hmm. um, you, of course, are one of the iconic alphabas. We are, when we, like Jackie said, when we when we decided we were going to do this, we were like, we, we got to call Julia. Fingers crossed she'll come back, which thank, thank you for being here again. Um, you were a long running, both tour and Broadway alphaba. Oh yeah, but I don't go anywhere near a, a Christine Dwyer kind of a record. That's extraordinary to me. That's that's really extraordinary. 
I, Christine's up there, I think, in the in like the likes of like Jackie Burns is, is top. And She's D, the D Rossioli, I yeah. think. Uh, and um Villamine has played it a long time. Yeah. Different is oh, typing it in like three different languages. So I'll, yeah. I'll bow, I'll bow to that. But all of that uh, and Jenny Benoya. Thank you for sharing the credit. Uh, but all of that said, you were also one of the iconic Elphabas. I don't want to take that away from you. Oh, I love my green girl sister. Um, what was your time with Elphaba like? It felt like it was six years long. Uh, <laughs> only because it's so difficult. That's that's yeah. all I mean. I mean, it's just, it sort of, you become ensconced in this yeah. bubble of, of, of the theater and that's kind of it. How much time does Alphaba have off stage in the show? Off like, stage? Much. Not a yeah. ton. She enters like, I don't know, 13, 14 minutes into the show. So the very top of the show. And then there's a little bit of um, like the Oz dust dance, but, uh, but there's no, I don't recall. There is a very specific moment, like when you can pee and that's it or intermission. That's it. Yeah. So no, no, uh, careful how much you hit that water in act one. But you do hit the water in act one. But the thing is like, you're moving your lot, you're moving so quickly that is just, you know, in general doesn't, yeah. um, but it was, look, it, it was, it was, a, it was the, it was so difficult. It was so joyful. It was so, um, uh, fulfilling. It was so difficult, yeah. <laughs> you know, but there were things like, I mean, she was, Christine was talking about it a little at the beginning, like the, it sounds so kind of cheese ball, but when you get to go out at the end, out, to, out the stage door, mm -hmm. it actually would disturb me a little bit. Sometimes there would be little ones, like little kids. And mind you, I was blonde at the time. So I came out and I'm blonde. I don't look anything like what has just occurred on stage. And sometimes right. there would be parents shoving their little kids and they'd be like, say hi, say hi. And I would, I would come down to their, where they were. And I would say, do you know who I am? And almost every time they'd be like, <laughs> but I would go, okay, I want you to look because there's always green in your hairline or yeah. green in your ear. And I'm like, do you see it? Even though I had just taken a shower, it's still there. It's impossible yeah. to get off. And then they would be like, oh, but it was disturbing to me that the parents were shoving their little kids in front of a stranger. Because well, you know what it is? It's that the parents are that excited, yeah. but they can't take ownership of that because it's too excited. So right. instead they throw their kid at you. But in right. reality, I'm sure the parents were also like, oh my God, that's self. But I love little kids that are like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know. All right. Amazing. Well, we all we all reaped the benefits of you uh, getting to play the green girl. I do want to talk. I know uh, we're running long tonight. and I know you have a long night ahead of you. Okay. Um, you're oh from my God. And you're going to Stars in the House. I'm going to Stars in the House. And then after that is Natalie Joy Johnson's show on YouTube, on her YouTube channel. And I have a little bit in there, too. So you guys, if you're having fun, you can follow Julia all night from gig hey, to gig. Hey, with Julia. Um, but I do want to talk to you about something very exciting that happened a few uh, weeks ago. You put out a tweet that just so beautifully honored uh, and called attention uh, and, and called for support of all of the incredible, the huge incredible community that makes theater happen. Um, and I screenshotted it here. Uh, oh. You put this tweet out. This is just the beginning. It goes on for many, 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 many tweets. On. I know. Start calling uh, about ushers and, and deck crew. Um, and and is this beautiful, beautifully uh, put call for support and just call for um, uh, to help people recognize what goes into theater. Uh, and it was so embraced by everybody under the sun who was like, yes, that that's what I haven't been able to say. That's how I'm feeling. Um, so first of all, thank you. Thank you for sharing oh, that. Thank you. Were you expecting it to blow up? Oh, of course not. And I like, this was great a, a friend of mine in Atlanta uh, like the next day, um, he was like, well, well, well. And I wouldn't have known this, but it got liked and retweeted. I'm not sure, but but liked by both Lawrence O'Donnell from MSNBC and Mary Trump. Wow. Oh my God. And I was like, what? And then, yeah. and that's when I went back and looked and I was like, oh, oh, I've never had a tweet have, have that kind of reaction before. Yeah. And and I was actually trying to figure out, like I wanted to say, there was something in my mind and I wanted to say it and I was trying to figure out, I, I, I Instagram um, 
I don't know how people do this because there's a limit to the caption, but some people have a reach around. They have figured out how to how to get past that, but I couldn't because I started to try and write it and then I hit a, it would be like, nope, that's your last word. You're not saying anything else. So I decided to put it on Twitter because I knew I could do it, but I, I tried to keep it concise. I mean, there are so many other um, uh, jobs inside the theater that I wasn't able to name call, you know, in, in the theater because yeah. I didn't want it to be an, a novel. And it happened to turn out, I, this was not on purpose, it happened to turn out that it was 10, um, uh, 10, 10, uh, tweets. 10 tweets, 10 subtweets. Twinks? Nope, not ten twinks. That's for later. In hey. um, but uh, Twink October coming to you is, next year. Exactly, ten tweets, which is exactly how many uh, frames you can put up in Instagram. So it all just sort of fit. But yeah. um, I, I'm 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 not glad because because it like went viral because that was nice. It was, no question, it was nice. But honestly, it's it doesn't. Matter. It's not like I can monetize it or pay my right. maintenance, but um, but I am glad because it meant that many people paid attention and perhaps will continue to pay attention yeah. to what all is going on. I mean, for me, for sure, it was this moment of like, yes, this is this is what I wanted to say, and I couldn't figure it out. So thank God, Julia Murray figured it out. That's one um, nice. Thank you. You can spokesperson, uh, Broadway, any day you want. I, I will put my seal on that. Um, <laughs> not, that my, not that my seal means anything, but you got it. Um, Julia, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank I you. I do want to bring all of our guests back for just a minute uh, to thank all of you for being here. What a time. We've had performances. We have Alpha Buzz. Uh, we, it's been the best time, uh, and I appreciate all of your time. Uh, and so thank you for being a part of Good Morning Tonight. <sighs> cheers. Thank you guys. Cheers. Cheers, darling. Happy so Cocktober, much. everyone. <laughs> Happy Cocktober. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Michael, we've made it. I think my internet may still be working. We'll see what the Courtyard Marriott has for us. us You're here. You're still there. You guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. Please do subscribe to this YouTube channel if you had fun. Uh, there are three shows that happen on this uh, every week. Uh, this Thursday, I'm back with my buddy Dylan Bustamante. We do a Broadway happy hour called the 530 Quarantini. And our guest this week is the hashtag Broadway wino herself uh, from Mean Girls, Rock of Ages. It's uh, Kate Rockwell is with us and we're so excited to hang out with her. Then on Monday nights, you've got MT Trivia three Broadway guests, two rounds of trivia, only one winner. Uh, they're on Mondays at nine o'clock. And then Jackie and I are actually taking next week off. One week from tonight is election night, uh, which as a reminder, if you'd like to throw a few dollars at Broadway for Biden, uh, please do that. Uh, but one week from tonight is uh, election night. So Jackie and I are taking the week off. Uh, please be safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. And uh, what do you say we give them some closing words, Miss Cox? Let's do it. And we'll see you guys in two weeks. Good morning tonight. Something has changed within us. It's right in front of me. I'm through with leadership that leads with hate and bigotry too late for second chances with just one week to go it's time to trust my instincts use my voice and vote it's time to try and save democracy I'd like to try and save democracy and you can't stop me now early voting has begun make sure that your voice is counted I'm through accepting that things are how they have to be some things we cannot change but this we can just wait and see too long we've been afraid of losing things like human rights well don't you worry we will not give up this fight we'd sooner try to save democracy we have to try to save democracy 
democracy and they can't stop us now. Michael, think of what we can do together. Unlimited. Together we're unlimited. Together we'll see a blue wave all across this land. Biden, the future will be better if we're all together. It's time for us to take a stand. Just you and I will save democracy. With you and I will save democracy. They'll never stop us now. So if you care for justice, lock in your vote for Joe. Cause we know who amongst us has served for years now really needs to go. And if we're voting blue then, we know we'll save the day. To Amy Coney, don't repeal the ACA. It's you and I will save democracy. We'll fly so high and save democracy. Our new press will be renowned. And nobody in the U.S., no Giuliani, Trump, or Pence, is ever gonna bring us down. I hope 